What is going on YouTube? Man, am I glad to be back. And in this video, we're gonna show some of our top holdback leopard geckos from the past two seasons. Selling in the billions each year, Rainbow Mealworms is your one-stop shop for all your insect needs. Their quality feeders and A-plus customer service keep me coming back to support the health and growth of all of our animals. Visit them today at rainbowmealworms.net to place your order. So when Whitney and I first got married, it was about a week before COVID actually hit. We went on our honeymoon to Hawaii where I saw one day gecko, which was pretty cool. And then as soon as we got back, everything was shut down. I never even wound up going back to work after that. Now we had always wanted to celebrate our wedding in Colorado where she's from. And so that's what we just got back from now two and a half years later. So I've been really busy preparing for that trip, selling a lot of geckos, networking and communicating with a lot of people. But now I'm back on the video grind. And I figure what better way to start it off than with some holdback leopard geckos that I've been holding out on you guys for for the past two seasons. Okay, now keep in mind this indoor lighting is not always going to be the best, but this is a generation one Manferno. Now for you guys who know what our Manferno project is, it's basically our Mandarin slash Inferno project, but really our Mandarin male that started that project is actually Tango Crush Mandarin an OG, which stands for orange green. It's like a European tangerine line that came to America a while back. And it's just a very nice orangey red saturation color uh, because of the Mandarin and the OG. And of course the Inferno, there's lots of green hues hiding under there, which you can kind of see but not a lot of contrast or pattern on the back. So this is more or less gonna be in our Charmander project, which is going for animals that are completely orange all the way down to the tip of the tail. Um, if we breed this animal to females that are heavily contrasted or to like bold stripe or hyperxanthic bold females, we're gonna get some really nice clown looking animals and that's gonna be a different direction we could go with this. So this is a male, we can take him to a lot of different females and that's the benefits of having a very nice saturated male. Now, okay, here's another male. Talking about green projects, you can really see the green just popping out underneath this gecko. I mean, this is a tangerine, tangerine gecko, but you can see all that army green hues coming out from underneath his skin. This also is a boy, so he'll be great to pair for any clown project or green tangerine project. Lots of greens going on in the head area right there, lots of spotting. And the goal for him would be contrast. So we would be breeding him to like hyperxanthic bold stripes or some of our other hyperxanthic bold projects that are heavily spotted and patterned so that we can create our own line of clown leopard geckos. Now, this also is a Manferno generation one, but I just started thinking about some other names the other day for this project. I might call this project the Synthesis Project because it has Inferno Tangerine, OG Tangerine, Mandarin Tangerine, Tango Crush Tangerine, and who knows what other tangerines were mixed in this from the past, you know, before Mandarin came Mandarin, it was GG, you know, Gecko Genetics. So there's so, it goes so much deeper than what this actually is right now that I might just call it the synthesis project. And synthesis means a blend or mix of all things, but you can really see some of that nice green patterning underneath there. So he's gonna make an excellent clown project, synthesis tangerine project, beautiful. Are you looking for a leopard gecko? Then head over to our Morph Market page at morphmarket.com geeky gecko creations. There will be a link to our page in the description below and you can see all the geckos that we have in stock currently. We have the paid program where you can hold 100 geckos at a time. And so sometimes we have even more geckos than that 100. So feel free to ask Frank at Geeky Gecko Creations for further inquiries. Happy hunting and we will catch you guys next time at geekygeckocreations.com and Geeky Gecko Creations on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. This also is in that green tangerine project. You can really see a lot of greens coming out on this boy. Another male. So again, we can take this male to clown females or hyperxanthic bold stripes or bold contrasted geckos and create some really, really nice clown contrasted animals. This boy is definitely a keeper and will be heavy in the rotation when he is ready. Now, as far as Tremper albino goes, you typically want to stay away from Tremper albino when you're trying to create contrast or any albino 
because albino will really take away the contrast of the animal. As you see, this animal has no black. Where it was black, it's white, and it's just slightly less saturated and colorful than a non-albino version of this is. This is a Manferno, again, generation number one. Now, one of the benefits to working with albino, and this particularly is a Tremper albino, Manferno, generation number one, is that the blacks, whenever you do have contrast, are going to turn into heavy white contrast. And then you could get geckos that almost have like lightning bolt type patterns on their back. And so that is a really cool angle to take the project. And one of the reasons why we're still gonna be working with albino in our highest quality tangerine lines because it creates this really nice speckled or lightning bolt or patterned white look and we wanna make more just like this or even more white contrasted. Now there's something in Korea called the Sunspot Leopard Gecko and this looks very similar to that where it's basically comes from hypo or super hypo bloodlines where it's not supposed to have any pattern, but it kind of has like this sun-kissed speckling pattern to it, and it looks pretty neat and interesting. It's not my favorite look per se, but it is pretty neat to see some contrast and some spotting underneath a tangerine leopard gecko. And so this gecko, which is also a male, will be used for projects along those lines as well. So this gecko's pretty cool, little wiry here, walking around a lot, but it's very like dark reddish orange. And so when we're talking about red orange projects, this gecko will be taken into a lot of more reddish orange projects and creating more of that Charmander look. And probably also some contrasted projects where we get some black spotting going on in the back and all of that kind of stuff. But in person, you can really see the reds of this animal. So it's really, really neat. In our next gecko room, I wanna make the room have white light in it, which is gonna simulate like the sun. And so I can get a lot better like natural lighting. But let's see if we can get a little bit of a natural lighting shot of this guy so you can see what he looks like outside versus inside. Okay, I still couldn't get a good shot of him outside, but you saw that little video that I just shared to maybe capture some of the reds. But that just means that you guys have to come see us in person at the Phoenix Reptile Expo where we will be showing off and demonstrating geckos just like this and have a bunch of geckos for sale November 19th and 20th in Mesa, Arizona, 2022. Okay, now this was a super interesting female. I just saw Junior's Leo's talking about one of his tangerine lines where he's calling it, well, he's not calling it, but I told him he should call it the Dirty Tang line, where it's just a bunch of contrasted and weird stuff going on. Anyways, I'll have to talk to him more about his particular project. This actually came from just an Inferno to an Inferno gecko. And so sometimes weird stuff will just pop out. And essentially this is probably how the Black Knight and Black Pearl and charcoal and carbon came into existence is sometimes you just hatch dark geckos. And when you hatch a dark gecko, it would be great for a dark project. This is our Inferno Tangerine project, pure Inferno Tangerine with emerine, some green in there. As you can see, it's not eclipse or anything like that, but wow, what an interesting gecko. And I don't know, I don't know what to pair to this guys. You guys let me know. Should I pair the, the reddish orange boys that you saw earlier in this episode? Let me know your thoughts. Okay, this is the last tangerine I'm gonna show. And early on in our seasons, there was a little bit of incubator fluctuation. So you can see this gecko has a little bit of the crinkled eye that can happen with fluctuation. But I can't remember if it's this gecko or another gecko, I'll look in a second, but it has a ton of carrot tail. And so this is part of the Charmander project. As far as crinkle eyes are concerned, you shouldn't have to worry about that passing on genetically. It usually happens from either a vitamin deficiency in the egg or from an incubator fluctuation. And I'm guessing all of the ones that have the crinkles, it happened early on in our season when we were moving incubators a lot as our operation was expanding. And so I think that little bit of fluctuation and inconsistency just wound up putting it a little past the 90 to 91 degree temperature mark and it had some swings and a couple of the geckos wound up having the eyelids. Now, whenever we do have these eyelids, we do sell the geckos for super, super cheap, um, even if they're really great quality animals. Like this is a Manferno generation number one, Tremper albino. Uh, I'm gonna use him for breeding, obviously, because I wanna heighten on that carrot tail that he's got going on here. But if I was to sell him, he'd only be like a hundred bucks, even though 
normal Manfernos would be about four, five, six, seven hundred, depending on their saturation. Now, his exact saturation is tough to tell because he is albino, which is why I typically try to not have too many albinos in my Manferno project, AKA synthesis project, because I don't only want to produce albinos. The best coloration and the highest contrast actually comes with non-albinos. However, as I showed you earlier in this video with the white pattern gecko, you can do some really cool things with Tremper Albino, Bell, or Rainwater, and so it's still a worthy project. But your most colorful tangerines are almost always going to be non-albinos. Now, over the last few months, I've been so busy, I didn't even get the chance to really show off our 2021 holdbacks. So what you just saw right now was our 2022 holdbacks, and I think that's good enough, but I'll flash you guys some of the females that we wound up holding back from 2021. So you can see some of the groups and the quality that we're working with. So this is a group of four right here. These are all Manferno females, generation one, and they have great color and great genetics to them. Man, look at this one right here. Super, super red. Oh my gosh. Oh, cause I think she's going into shed. I was gonna say that's the reddest I've ever seen her or a gecko in our collection, but I think that's cause she's going into shed. So maybe I'll snap some pics of her and uh, she'll wind up going on the Instagram reel or something. Again, this lighting is not gonna be the best, but you get an idea of the girls that we're working with here. This is just one group of Manfernos, and we have quite a few groups of Manfernos. So if you're looking for some synthesis projects, some Manferno leopard geckos, we're gonna have tons of them, guys, at the end of 2022. Uh, they're incubating right now, and they're incubating for male and female. Uh, split gender, you know, just at 85 degrees. So I'm gonna grow them up, see what they look like, take pictures of them. And I know you guys like to buy older geckos because they're bigger, ready to breed, and they're well started and showing most colors. So here's another group of our Manferno generation one females. Again, looking very purdy, very saturated. So imagine taking like the 2022 male that I just showed you and breeding him to this group of like reddish orange girls. It's gonna be amazing, guys. And we got a bunch of eggs incubating in the incubator now um, from their dad, which is what, which was the original Mandarin Tango Crush OG Tangerine that we inherited before we created these Generation One girls, you know, uh, crossed with Inferno. And we also spent like three years crossing our best Infernos to each other and creating more Infernos so that when we did cross the Mandarin into the Infernos, you were getting really, really high quality and good stuff in the Manferno generation one. So just for comparison, here's a group of pure Infernos. So you can see not as red as the Manfernos, which is the Mandarin crossed into the Inferno, but these are still beautiful geckos. Uh, these are albino, so they're a little less colored. They don't have as, as much contrast, but all of that pattern underneath is really, really green, and they make some of the prettiest animals, prettiest geckos. And so that's why the Manfernos Generation 1s look amazing. And then Manferno Generation 2 is looking even better than that. And we're going to have some Manferno Generation 2s available at the Phoenix Reptile Expo this year, as well as online, whatever doesn't sell at the Expo. There's another one crawling around back there. Let me see if I can get a shot of her. I just like to be careful not to crush anybody with this lay box because this is a fairly heavy lay box. But yeah, I'll, ju I'll just let them be for another video. You guys get the idea. These are our pure infernos. And that was many years, well, that was like three seasons of me selecting our best infernos and breeding them back to each other from pure infernos. And it started with this boy, let me get this boy real quick. This is Skittles, oh, he's in shed. But the reason I call him Skittles is because he literally has every color under the rainbow underneath his pattern. Uh, so he was a pure Inferno that we bought and you can see he has some black contrast, but he also has purple, heavy greens. You could even see it going through his shed. And he was bred originally to our OG female Inferno, which I actually know where she is because I just, 
put her in here the other day. Here's another group of Infernos with the OG Inferno. So these are mom with daughter. There's the mom. That's the original Tremper Albino Inferno that I bred to the male I just showed you for three seasons. The reason I got her is because she's just a pure solid tone of orange. And then he was a mix of greens and purples and black spotting. And so they created babies like this, which is amazing. Um, and a little hard to tell the brightness of this animal, but very, very bright Inferno Gecko. So Inferno is known for its bright orange coloration. And the Manfernos are, are taking a step in the redder direction because of the Mandarin Tango Crush OG boy that we started breeding in that project. Now, let me see if I can actually show you guys something real quick. I see something that you need to watch out for when group breeding, and it is something we do keep an eye on and make proper adjustments. So this gecko right here, the end of her tail is dying, as you can see. So what more or less happened, and you can see a little bit of biting on her right there. It's weird. Sometimes the males aren't what bites the geckos. It's the females. So a female must have bit the, the tip of this tail. And then the gecko's genetics are meant to realize whenever infection is near and it cuts itself off. So this is fairly common. If you're group breeding, you'll see that happen and you can remove the gecko that's causing the issue or remove the gecko with the issue. Um, but that tail is perfectly fine. It will die and drop off in time. It's sad to see it's not what you want to do, but it is part of breeding. If you are leaving males and females together or females in groups, you're going to see that kind of stuff happen. My goal is domestication. So the longer these geckos are domesticated year after year after year, the less that that is going to happen. And I've got it to a point now where almost every group, let me show you, there's a lot of groups in this room. So every one of these groups are okay now, but this was one of the groups that I was monitoring because there was a new gecko that I added to this group. And whenever you add a new gecko to the group, they got to get reused to each other, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see the tail is dying. I know it's very sad, guys, but you guys know that we like to show you the good, the bad, the ugly over here. We like to show you everything. Stay tuned for my video on group breeding. I have some very visually sensitive pictures that I will most likely be sharing with you guys on, uh, on that video to show you some bad wounds and stuff that can happen when you are cohabitating or experimenting with group breeding and just getting groups going. Um, there is a theory out there that I'm experimenting with now more is keeping the babies in groups for their entire life. Now, if you do this too early on, the geckos start biting at each other's tails and nipping each other's tails and, and that's not good for sales and that's just not good in general. But if you leave geckos in pairs of two until they're about three months old and then females you could keep together after that in groups of four until they are breeder size, they'll all grow up together and maybe, just maybe, they will be less hostile towards each other. It's tough to tell because in breeding season, you know, they're going through a lot of horm hormonal changes and all that kinds of stuff. And so I can't exactly guarantee it, but this much I can tell you, if you group breed, you are gonna have to keep an eye out for what I just showed you right now, or even things worse that can happen, but you'll have to stay tuned for that video, which, will be coming soon. So I meant to make this a video of all of our holdbacks, like Black Knight, Afghanicus, Crosses, Tangerine, weird fasciolata stuff, but I got tied up in the Tangerine room. So I'm gonna have to save all of that for another video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. What do you think? Please answer some of my questions I left in the video about like pairings and what you guys think. And also drop comments for future video recommendations that you would like to see. But we got so many more holdbacks that I need to show you. And now that I'm back and remarried again to the same person for the same time, even though we never separated, I'm gonna be doing a lot more videos. So thank you guys, I love you. I'll see you in the next video and peace. Oh, have a geeky gecko, great day. Bye.